Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm giving eight tips for new design leaders. Those aspiring leaders and those who've just recently been promoted into a leadership role, I thought I would come up with a list of helpful tips for those getting started and who are new to leadership. Well, it's tips for design leaders. I think these rules could be applied for anybody in a leadership role and more focused in the creative design sphere. The very first tip I have for you is to delegate. When you move into this role, especially if you were in that team and now you've been shifted into a more senior role, one of the, the problems that a lot of young leaders and new leaders have is that they will insist on doing everything themselves. And trying to do everything instead of realizing that there is a team around them and their responsibilities have changed so instead of trying to do everything yourself and trying to micromanage everything you you need to be able to pass this work on to other people who are better suited to be able to do the work when you knew you are more than likely going to inherit a design team and that can be challenging but I would encourage you to try and surround yourself as you grow the team with skill sets that complement your skills and or replace the skills that the team has now lost now that you're going into management. You need people around you and a team that complements one another and a team of people who buy into the same vision. My third tip is that socializing and sharing design is equally as important as delivering the work. What I mean by this is you need to be communicating as much as possible with all the people within your team and outside of your team what you're doing. So everything from when production starts and you start putting stuff on the walls and people need to see it and critique it and you need to share that with them to creating decks that can be shared within the business that allows people to understand what you're doing. Creating transparency amongst all stakeholders is really important for buy-in. Realize as a new leader that it is your responsibility to share this work with everybody all the time. Don't wait until you ask to do it. The fourth tip I have is to be a multiplier, a genius maker, not a dictator. You need to allow people to do their very best work. You need to not do their work for them. One of the mistakes I made very early in my career is that when the work wasn't how I wanted it to be, I ended up working all night trying to fix other people's work. What you need to do is learn how to get people to step up and get the work to where you want it to be. You need to ask questions about how they would solve a problem rather than just tell them what to do. My fifth tip is that communication is very important. Like I've said, you've got to socialize and share your design. But what you do need to do is communicate effectively with people. From the first time you're in a room, you as the leader are there to stand up and to tell people what the strategy is going forward, what the vision might be, to explain to people what's been done by the team or what they're going to do. What your plan is, is 
crucial for you to share, not to keep it all inside, but to communicate. And then all the things that go on in a business, you are responsible for communicating. Everything from a playbook to a career path to how you're going to evaluate that staff member over their career, you need to set that up. You need to communicate. You need to keep this communication going regularly. Have sit downs with your team and with the other leaders frequently to ensure that everybody is aligned and on the same page and heading in the right direction. My sixth tip is to focus on the meta of design as you do the craft of design. What I mean by this is the game within the game. The stuff that adds to design, not just the pixels on the screen, but you need to be aware of a whole bunch of other stuff like different platforms, different browsers, different techniques, all the other stuff that surrounds the work you do. You need to be very aware of it. And while you don't need to be a master of it all, bring the right people in the room to communicate it in more detail where it's needed. So make sure that you're not just focusing on these beautiful layouts and that's it. You've got to be thinking about performance and accessibility and uh, hardware and software trends and things that are going on around the everyday doings within the team. My seventh tip is to find a mentor or a coach or surround yourself with people that you can constantly be in dialogue with to just talk about what you're going through and to get some guidance and get some feedback from people who are not in the room every day to just make sure that you're still growing and that you're doing the right things and you have some sort of sounding board um, to be able to talk about what's going on with you and how you're leading your team. My eighth and final tip is to just be nice. Nobody wants to work for an asshole. Nobody wants to be scared of being around you. Be warm, be friendly, be caring, be empathetic, and be funny. You know, just laugh and have fun. You know, we don't save lives with design. We just enhance them. We just enhance experiences. We're not that dramatic that we need to get so uptight and worked up and everything else that nobody wants to be around you. So just simply be nice to one another. All right, so to summarize, you need to delegate, you need to surround yourself with people who complement your skill sets, socialize and share your, your designs, you need to allow people to do their best work. Remember that communication comes from the top and it's your responsibility to communicate effectively with everybody and align everyone. Focus on the meta, not just the craft. Find a mentor or coach. And lastly, remember to be nice. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment and stay cool.